Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Pirates above the clouds and goblins. And as it see, is there a rarity difference? Goblins is common and pirates is rare. Maybe I should take the, the pirates then because we're more likely to get more goblins later. And then there's more goblins, vampires and archaeology. What's the rarity on the vampires? Vampires are common and archaeology is common as well. Let's do archaeology, make it a mono blue deck. Save vampires for later. All right, so the rare that you're guaranteed to get in the pirate deck is Corsair Captain, giving other pirates plus one plus one and making a treasure token. And then what else did we get? The Sharding Sphinx. Yeah, that name cracks me up. Six mana, four four flyer. Whenever an artifact creature you control deals combat damage to a player, make a one one thopter. Any other rares? The Dalkin Archmage for mana O2 that draws a card when you play artifacts. Got some nice card draw in the archaeology deck. All right. Sure. Uh oh. This is the Chandra deck, I assume. Oh wow, they got a Chandra Liliana deck. That's lucky. Don't want to cure obsession quite yet. We'll just chart a course here. Pillar of Flame. This was a nice card back in standard too. So I don't have a whole lot going on here. Just gonna thirst for knowledge end of turn. And then I can discard something random to get back with the Archaeomander. Opponent is stuck on two at least. I guess we'll discard Cutlass. And then we'll just play the Juggernaut. Could draw some more cards by playing Archmage, but I don't think we're lacking card draw at the moment. I just want to punish the opponent's stumble here with a good old Juggernaut. This card was once too good. Now it's barely playable in limited. Don't want a Curious Obsession, the Juggernaut, quite yet, I don't think. Hmm. Oh, I see. Standard Bearer. Alright, let me go full control. I think. I mean, I could let the trade happen and just play Archaeomander, to be honest. 
Now let's just capture Sphere. So no double blank for Liliana. And I need one more land for Chandra. That's too bad. So this could get back Juggernauts. Or I can just play Prosperous Pirates. Uh, the lands are from the mythic decks. The Chandra deck has these mountains and the Liliana deck has these swamps. So you just gotta get lucky to open them. One damage to target player, 5-4. Guess we'll just play Captain. It was tempting to cure Subsession there, but I'm pretty happy just doing this. See, if I do this, then I can't Juggernaut anymore. We've got three cards left. They kept a sketchy hand, so maybe it's because they had a bunch of planeswalkers. It's uh, Hungry Flames. Pretty good card. And Recruitment gets back the Standard Bear. Well, we currently don't have a great solution for this Gourmand. Can bounce it with read the tides. Probably just gonna draw some of my own cards. Sivitor so place. Attack for 5, play creature. Can just bounce both with 3 the tides. You wish you had a fraction of my power. There's plenty of cards in graveyard, so that probably kills my captain. I'm gonna fall to 3. Yeah, we're not in great shape here. The Gourmand sacking the creature with Capture Sphere on it was kind of the point where the game turned around. Interesting, they're staying back to protect Liliana. Well, it does work in our favor here. This doesn't draw if we deal damage to Planeswalkers, only players.
Now I have to be careful here. I can't put a Cure Obsession on Deckhand, otherwise it dies. But I can equip it with uh, Cutlass at least. Is this a Blinded Bat plus Gourmand's turn, maybe? Keeping up the standard bear. Well, this seems like a good start. Now, this does have summoning sickness, despite being an artifact, it's also a creature. We can just play a statue bouncing the excavator again to replay it, just to keep drawing cards. Sure. We're going off. And then now... Probably just attacking with... Only the deck hand. They could have another removal spell in hand, I guess. Could also put Cure Obsession on the Archaeomander. That way it doesn't trade for the standard bearer. And it would have to double block it. I guess that's also reasonable. Or I can just equip deck hand, only attack with deck hands, and that's a two turn clock. Although getting the Corsair out there could be nice. Hmm, not sure. Feels like putting the Cutlass on the deck hand is kind of putting all my eggs in one basket, since the deck hand can kind of win the game by itself by making my stuff unblockable. So we'll try this approach. No spirits. This can deal three damage to any targets, including the opponents. Can activate that hand to make my creature unblockable. Our opponent did get to play both of their planeswalkers. But I think we'll be okay. So, Cutlass on Corsair. And uh, Excavator can just go face. Alright, that was a nice grindy game. Opponent with a bit of a stumble at the beginning, stuck on two lands, but then they recovered nicely. Gormans maybe should have attacked that one turn where it stayed on defense. Ooh, nice branching evolution, that's definitely an exciting addition. For maybe a plus one plus one counter deck in Historic. For some decks, it's definitely better than doubling seasons since we don't care about other counters. All right, let's see if we can get a second win. I don't actually hate this. Excavator can enable Charter Course. Don't know what this mountain is from, but it looks cool.
It's a spell casting deck, good to know. And dragons. Ooh, nice. They will kill this with Immolator, so I kind of want to wait until I can play this and Spellbomb in the same turn. So I'm not doing much for this turn, sadly. Alright, so that could answer Gadrak. Don't have to do it now. Well, Lathless is definitely a problem. I don't really want to bounce Gadrak and Lathless, because then they can play Lathless first and then make an extra token. Can hold Read the Tides to bounce the Dragon tokens they generate. Can bounce Lathless now, I guess. And then Archaeomander, get it back, replay it, draw a card. Is that the best course of action? Probably. I might just draw with a spell bomb end of turn. I'm definitely liking some of the synergies from the archaeology deck. Seems like there's quite a bit of play to it. Can bury Druid back the spell bomb. Could draw three with read the tides, but I think I need to keep it to bounce stuff. All right, Sharding Sphinx. It does combo with the Excavator if I just deal damage to my opponent, too. Just as a side note. Guess we're bouncing Lathless again. Our opponent must be getting tired of replaying the same card over and over. They can kill the Archmage now. It's 
so could play the Sphinx, hope they can kill it. What's my other line? Can read the tides, bouncing the two dragons. Get in for five. Try and tempo them out a little bit. Although it would be much better if I can Sphinx first. Yeah, now with the treasures it also becomes much easier for them to replay the dragons anyway. I don't think there's been an attack step yet to this game. Yeah, this is bad. Welp, I guess we're dead. Oh, that's right, we did attack with uh, the excavator on turn two. Offering the trade, I think I gotta take this. And then next turn I can bounce the two tokens, try and recover from there. If they have a burn spell here, I'm super dead. Alright, GG's. Yeah, I'm guessing the dragon deck is a rare one. This hand's okay. Yeah, you get to keep the lands. That's the main appeal of Jumpstart. So this is an Angel deck and a... Not sure what the black is for. I guess I'll draw a card. The Swamp is from the Minions deck, apparently. Cool looking swamp. Next room we get to go archive into spell bomb. And then draw some more cards. Lurker. They discarded Limvala, so I guess they're missing double whites. Ooh, I gotta play this first. If we get to untap with this, it's pretty awesome. Can go Archive draw a card into Spellbomb draw a card, although it might not untap here. Take five. This card's pretty annoying to play against. All right, we get to go off. Oh yes, oh yes. Ah, 
I feel like we've already won. Emancipation Angel. I remember this from Avacyn Restored. Alright. Well, we've got a nice man advantage thanks to the Archive now. So what to do, what to do. Okay, maybe bounce Angel, play Archaeomander, get the spell bomb back. That's maybe a fine place to start. then probably just thirst for knowledge our deck is pretty bad at closing out a game but it does draw a lot of cards Spellbomb plus uh, Archaeomander is a nice combo. I've got two Archaeomanders and one Spellbomb, I think. Bone Splinters, sure. Let's see. Could bounce the Archmage here. Maybe that's fine. Maybe it's a bit too greedy. I've got so much card draw already. Yeah, you can have it. Discard Cutlass, or we can discard two lanes. Meter Golem's a nice one too. So you can play Sphinx plus Captain maybe. I maybe should have played it in the different order, that way I get the treasure token to maybe bounce my own Sphinx in case I have a removal spell for double black. Because now they have a window to maybe kill this at instant speed without me being able to bounce it with a spell bomb. So if I go Captain into Sphinx, we kind of mitigate that issue. Feels like I'm going to need the Sphinx to close out the game. Opponent's empty-handed. And this is where our card advantage starts taking over. They might concede to the Meteor Golem killing the Angel, to be honest. But I'm probably better off playing Sphinx. So far the games have been pretty good. Just the right amount of interaction. The bombs feel powerful, but not unbeatable. So it feels like the decks are pretty balanced. So... After this game, we'll um, jump into another jumpstart. We've done three different decks so far. Garruk plus lands. We did uh, the flying deck plus enchantments, and now the archaeology deck plus pirates. Open Gadwick, and we don't even get gems for it, because it's from Jumpstart, so it's from a different set. 
Yeah, this feels pretty bad. Alright, we'll resign. And do another one. Ooh, Chandra. Haven't had this one yet. What? My hair is on fire? <laughs> I know. How about devilish Chandra? I'm in. Some nice mono red action. So let's see. We've got barrage from the devil's deck and collateral damage. Pillar of flame, nice removal spell. Some magmots. The Powerling. Young Pyromancer is a nice one. Sin Prodder, a nice one from the Devil's Deck. I remember people being very hyped about this when this released originally. Did not end up seeing a ton of play, but definitely a fun card. And the Prankster seems very good too. Ooh, Hellrider. Man, this card definitely saw a lot of play back in Standard. In the Red Aggressive decks, in Gruul especially. Potentially card to go in a Cavalcade deck. Where you get to deal additional damage with Torbran. I think Hellrider might see some play. And then of course Chandra. And Chandra's Incinerator, so... We got quite a few rares in this one. The Sin Prodder, the Hellrider, Incinerator, and Chandra. And then of course the Fancy Mountains, thanks to the Chandra pack. This one definitely gave us quite a bit of value. This hand seems fine. We'll keep the Mountain from the Chandra deck hidden for now. Although our opponent seems to be playing the same deck. I wonder if the Jumpstart matchmaking also gives you more mirror matches, because when we play the 5-color deck we also get matched against multiple 5-color decks. And then this is from the Elves deck. So we've got a Brute plus Traitor's Greed combo. Ooh, nice. Opponent got a uh, Allosaurus Shepherd. So let's see. I mean, I wouldn't mind trading this for the lead and the token. So I might want to wait until I play Jester to then sacrifice something and deal one damage. Yeah, it'll probably just take the the four here. And I'm okay racing. And then I could Traitor's Greed now, or I can wait to set it up with a Jester, and then the one damage from Jester can kill the Shepherd. I'm not doing anything this turn, but it might be worth it long term. So that did mess up my game plan quite a bit. Yeah, now they can just activate the Shepherd, although I guess they can attack with Shepherd itself, otherwise I can just trade. Hmm. 
Man, do I really trade my Jester for a 1-1 token? I guess I don't really have a choice. So no Shepherd activations this turn. Ooh. I think we've got a combo here. Oh yes. That was pretty sweet. Do I attack? Probably not. Now I can probably afford to attack. Alright, I think that should just about do it. They're forced to block, but then they would die to the Devil's Trigger if they do trade, so... And another Serendibifreet. Yeah, this seems fine. The Powerling is a pretty nice combo with the Hungry Flames. Ooh, Sin Prodder. So I don't really want to attack here. Simprodder also combo with the Powerling. So we do have a lot of cross synergy between the Devil's deck and the Chandra deck. Let's just draw. Alright. So Simprodder gets to attack. Really want to get this Powerling in play, and then next turn we can maybe Hungry Flames killing the rats. So they can't easily chum the Brutes, and then this will trigger the Paraling as well. Or we can just kill the Thermo Alchemist, that also works. Yeah, the only awkward thing about Sin Prodder is if we reveal a land they can just put it in uh, the graveyard for free, essentially. Let's just send the Paraling, see what happens. Yeah, 
If they block with the alchemist, then of course it is more tempting to Hungry Flames the rats. Nah, I'll still play the 5-5 five five or the 5-drop here. Devils does combo with the Chain Brute, potentially, if we have 6 mana. Although this might be the turn where we finally make an attack with the Chain Brute. Well, we've got options. I think I just attack with all and see what happens. Alright, so their plan is to maybe sag the immolator to kill the brutes. But now if I just hungry flames the rats, that's not gonna work out for them. They want to kill Immolator, because then they can just sacrifice it, and this is dying anyway. And then we can still activate the Elemental. I guess I could have done this first, because this would trigger the paralleling. Maybe your opponent has a response. Interesting. So I can't use this in the opponent's turn, so I'll just end up using this end of turn anyway. I've got even more options now. I mean, I don't hate Devils, sack it to the Brute, kill the White and attack. And yeah, opponent sees the writing on the wall. And explodes. Yeah, maybe they thought the Thermal Alchemist could deal damage to creatures as well. Assault Formation. Definitely gonna make a Defender deck now. That we have uh, Wall of Blossoms and Assault Formation. Alright, those were two pretty quick wins with the Chandra Devilish deck. Definitely seeing some synergies between the two decks as well, which definitely helps with uh, the power level of the overall deck. Got some packs apparently. I forgot we're at the stage where we're opening all the temples again in uh, M21 boosters. Not the most exciting packs to open. Yeah, there's been a few issues lately with opening the same rares over and over and not getting anything for it, not even gems. M21 has all those temples, now jump starts. They're giving us a bunch of cards that also appeared in previous sets, and instead of giving us gems for it, we're just getting five copies of the same card. So it's a little frustrating. I was hoping they found a better solution by now. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.